Watch Me Code. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install MongoDB on a Windows 7 box for development. If you head over to mongodb.org, you can find all kinds of information about what this document database actually is and how it works. You'll also find how to install MongoDB on a Windows environment. Now honestly, I just went and googled how to install MongoDB on Windows, and it came up with this page pretty quickly, rather than having to search through the site in order to find it. The first thing you'll notice on this page, though, is two notes at the top. If you're running Windows XP, you can't use anything newer than version 2.1. Anything 2.2 or above doesn't work with Windows XP. I'm on Windows 7, so that's okay. We're going to go ahead and use MongoDB 2.6.4, which is the current install version. However, since I am on Windows 7, there's a hotfix that I need to install in order to deal with memory map files in Windows. So the first thing you'll need to do then is go and download this hotfix. I've already done this and I have it sitting here in my downloads folder, but you'll need to follow the process to obtain this hotfix and install it before you do anything else. I'm going to go ahead and do this here. I'm going to extract it into a hotfixes folder so I know where it is. And I'm going to go ahead and install this. And then I'm going to install it. And when you finally get this little screen up here, you can go ahead and click yes. It'll run through the installation here. And now I have to restart Windows. Of course, I'm in a Windows virtual machine, so even though Windows is restarting, you're still hearing me and seeing this. All right, now I have that hotfix installed, I can go download and install MongoDB itself. So back on the installation page for MongoDB on Windows, you'll see some links for the downloads page. Head over to the MongoDB download page here, and you can see there's Windows, Linux, Mac, Solaris. Download the correct version of this for your system. I need the 64-bit version, and I've already downloaded the MSI file right here in my downloads folder. So I'm going to run through the installation for this now. Hit next, accept the license agreement. I'm going to do a complete install because I want to make sure I get all of the features, not just the typical features. Honestly, you probably wouldn't miss anything if you did the typical install, but I like to do the complete install just to make sure I have everything that comes with it. And there we have it, MongoDB is installed on our computer, and now we can actually run the MongoDB server. Before I do that though, I'm going to scroll down here on this installation page. And I see that there are a few recommended things to do. It wants you to actually move MongoDB into a C colon slash MongoDB folder. But honestly, this is optional, so I'm not going to bother doing this. If you look down at the Run MongoDB folder, you'll see that there's a nice big warning here saying that you don't want MongoDB running with unlimited access to everything. You want it to run in secure mode because secure mode is going to prevent outside computers from connecting to MongoDB on your box here. And that's generally a good idea for your development environment. Now, a production environment is a completely different story, and I'm not even going to touch that at this point. We're just getting MongoDB installed on Windows for your development environment. So the first step that it talks about here is creating a data folder for MongoDB to use for all of its database files. I'm going to go back over to Explorer here. I'm going to create the necessary folder, data folder, and inside of the data folder, I'll create a new folder in here called DB, and this will be the folder where all of the MongoDB database files are stored. Now to run MongoDB, I'm going to go to my program files, find MongoDB, and in the bin folder here, I'm going to run the mongod.exe. You can see this opens a command window, and it has a whole bunch of stuff output here telling us that MongoDB is, in fact, up and running. I'm going to open up another command prompt at this point. And inside of this command prompt, I'm going to type mongo. Well, mongo isn't recognized right now. This is the mongo shell command that I'm trying to run, but it can't find this on the command line. What I could do is run mongo directly from here, and that would open it up. But I want to be able to do that from the command line wherever I want. So I'm going to go over to my computer, properties, advanced settings, and I'm going to add an environment variable and I'm going to modify the path environment variable to include the MongoDB bin folder. Go ahead and modify the path variable to include the MongoDB bin folder. Hit OK, hit OK, hit OK. In order for that to take effect in my command prompt, I'm going to have to close this command prompt, run another command prompt, and now when I type Mongo, we do get the Mongo terminal open. 
we can see that we're running MongoDB shell version 2.6.4, and we're actually running MongoDB 2.6.4 as well, and it's connected to this server here that I'm running in the background. Now, if you want to set this up as a Windows service, you can do that as well. There are options for setting it up in Windows as a service, and you'll find information about doing that here in the same installation page. I'm not going to bother doing that at this point. On Windows, I prefer to just run MongoDB whenever I need it and then shut it down when I don't need it. But if you do want MongoDB running all the time, if you're doing a lot of development work inside of it, it's generally easier to have it set up as a Windows service, and that way you don't have to deal with a command prompt being open, you don't have to remember to start and stop it as you need, it'll just be up and running all the time. Now I'm not going to actually show you how to do anything in MongoDB at this point, we just got it installed on Windows, and in an upcoming episode, I'll show you how to work with it from the command line, as well as how to work with it from the MongooseJS library for Node.js.